last uh, year or so um, to just like put this into play, basically. Uh, Melissa said she wanted to see a picture. So <laughs> that's uh, my husband. Thanks. We knew we were, uh, I knew when I started working in the vocations office, I was either going, to, this was my next step into religious life, or I was going to get married. And shortly after, we started dating, and, and it's been wonderful. So, uh, St. Anthony of Padua in the Woodlands, we're both from there. Um, before we get to more about the Andrew dinner, uh, I really wanted to start with a saying, like the reflection stated, prayer is like the number one most important thing. Uh, we can have a hundred Andrew dinners in the diocese, but if we're not praying and being very intentional and specific about our prayers, um, it might be all in vain. So that's why I wanted to highlight a couple um, prayer opportunities or things that I really hope each vocations committee can implement and if you're already doing it at this parish at your parish I would challenge you to uh, figure out how you can do it a little bit better uh, so if you already have adoration for vocations how can you uh, like Rick was saying ask the life team people can you can you get all of the kids to come to pray for their vocation uh, on one one day of the whole year. Once a month is uh, great for adoration for vocations if you have to have every quarter. Some parishes have it every week, but um, how? What are, what are the new ways we can implement that? Um, announcing it in the bulletin is really good. Surprisingly, um, I kind of thought the bulletin was old school even though I would flip through it, but um, We've been asking people, how did you find out about our events? And they say the bulletin. So getting a little infographic that says adoration for vocations in the flock note in uh, the bulletin is great. Uh, and then inviting new people, even who aren't on the vocations committee, into it is great. I almost think it's, I don't want to say a requirement of the vocations committee, because I know we're all stretched thin. But as a vocations committee, I think every person should be at adoration vocations because we need to pray. Um, at that time, if you're available. Uh, another thing that can happen at adoration or apart from adoration is the rosary for vocations. Uh, so I know, I guess I'm kind of starting the vocations committee uh, at St. Anthony's and Susan is, um, does daily or the daily rosary before daily mass every single day. So basically we said, can we take one of the days of the week? So we chose Thursday because uh, the luminous mysteries um, can we say a, adoration, or say a rosary for vocations uh, every single Thursday? And so we're going to start doing that. And then uh, after, after Mass, possibly as well, a lot of people do it on Zoom. Um, but a rosary for vocations uh, is another great way to do it. Uh, you probably saw the prayer calendars when you came in here. We we're putting those out on the website every single um, month. They don't have the new guys yet because we haven't, uh, they, we took our pictures yesterday for the poster. So I'll rotate them in there uh, in September. Um, but we really just like, that's another way, put it on your fridge, put it in the car, uh, have one by my desk and on the fridge uh, to pray for them. And so everyone uh, in the vocations committee can pass that out. Some have a vocations kiosk and they'll put it in there monthly. One parish um, publishes it in their bulletin, um, but any that's just another way. I don't need to harp on the prayer calendars. Um, another resource I wanted to let you know that's available is, oops, wrong way. Uh, these prayer cards exist and are made. I know we've been saying like we're revamping the website for a long time. We actually are, and all of this will be on the website soon. But I just wanted to actually in person tell you that all of this is available. Most of it has come about because someone asked for it and or the Holy Spirit inspired us so we made it. And so these um, are seminarian specific. They're different than the trading cards because the trading cards we actually buy from a company that prints them. The kids love the trading cards and I also love that they have their picture on them. So they're a resource that you can hand out. Um, but then these, I just print them on cardstock or colored um, like gray paper. They can be printed on your own time or cut, uh, or you can also ask me to get you a set. And these have the different seminarians' names on them. And so what I would challenge your vocations committee to do, and I think the Sarens did this at their last meeting, is they just uh, randomly chose one, and then you can pray for Alexander, for instance, 
every single day for the next five to seven years because he needs it. <laughs> they all need it and really appreciate it too. So that's one thing that's available. Um, a new thing that uh, I just put together and I plan to do for the rest of my life is I took the USCCB website and looked at the liturgical calendar. So every single day that there is, it's an ordinary time and there's no uh, feasts or memorials, the priests kind of have the option to pick a special uh, occasion mass. And one of those is uh, for, for an increase in priests uh, to the priesthood. Um, it's in the, the manila envelopes. I meant to bring one up here. Uh, there's printed out all of the days until uh, January that we have this option. So I would really encourage you to take the whole piece of paper and hand it to your uh, pastor, email it to him, text him, and say, hey, can we choose one Mass a month that we say four vocations? Um, Father Richard has emailed it out to every single priest. I think St. Jerome uh, already scheduled like one a month for the next, um, I think it was St. Jerome, I can't remember exactly. But um, if you, if we continually remind them and ask, hey, can you do this? Or the vocations committee is going to be there. Not a, it doesn't have to be a separate mass, but just the normal daily mass time. Uh, pray for vocation. And the prayers are really beautiful. Uh, not many people get to hear them, but it's specifically in the prayers. It's like the collect and then the prayer right before the Eucharistic prayer and then the uh, closing prayer. I'll have something about priests. Um, and then lastly on the prayer initiatives, uh, general intercessions. This is not in the packet um, because it's a lot of pages to print, but it does exist. We adopt, adopted it from another diocese and it's uh, inter general intercessions that are different uh, for every single day of the uh, week based on the years A, B, and C. So they kind of go back to the gospel, some of them which I think is wonderful because the bad Catholic that I am, I zone out during the prayers of, or during the, uh, prayers of the faithful. And then when I hear something about vocations, or, and it's not just the normal for an increase in uh, priests the religious, in religious, um, I pay attention a little bit. So anyway, um, any prayer is better than no prayer. Um, and if you don't have anything to do at your meeting, just call a meeting together where you pray a rosary for vocations. Uh, storming heaven and asking the Blessed Mother for her intercession will be worth your while, um, even when we can't see the fruits uh, right away. Um, I guess the next part I wanted to talk about vocational events. Uh, there's a lot that we put on and then a lot of like random days that your vocations committee could also do something special. The USCCB sets these days. Some of them are recurring every single year, like, oh, the fourth Sunday of Easter or um, Feast of the Sacred Heart is World Priest Day. I would encourage you, though, if, you, if there's already a million things on the calendar for that one day, the general population doesn't really know that it's World Day of Prayer for priests. So you can do it the next weekend, and it doesn't hurt anything. <laughs> um, I'll start with World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Uh, there's a whole packet in the uh, folders uh, that I'll give to each of you uh, just to take home with your, for your parish. It was also emailed out to every single priest, and it has uh, homily ideas. It has prayers of the faithful, um, different bulletin graphics. Some of, the, uh, some of them passed out this year. They did the decade a day or this one. Uh, this one's going to be updated uh, here pretty soon, as soon as we get the pictures back. Because um, you can pass those out or um, post them on social media. I like the decade a day for the month of May because it kind of has to do with Mary and praying uh, the rosary. Um, but all of these are options. I guess I'm telling you, um, even though the, the priests already know, because they get a lot of emails. And a lot of times they do not respond <laughs> to specifically me and even Father Richard. So if we bring it up to them and say, hey, like, uh, I would like to do something for World Day of Prayer for Vocations, we're going to pass out this prayer card. Or uh, even if you don't pass out prayer cards, we'd like to have a table so we can let kids take a picture with the priest heads. I think I got one of those on here. That was at St. Thomas More this year. Um, they love it. They really do love it. And uh, also doing this on a day that maybe is already coffee and donuts. So you're not begging people to come into the parish hall just to do whatever. Um, so World Day of Prayer for Vocations is the fourth Sunday uh, in Easter. World Priest Day is the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 
world priest day and celebrating our priest is still, um, I think, a vocational event. N not really on the discerner, like not for the discerners, but acknowledging their priesthood, thanking them for their priesthood is kind of a way that uh, we can show kids, like, this is an option for your life. Priesthood Sunday, yes. Um, you said 24 and 25? Oh, yeah, that's next on my list. Um, one of, I think, the least uh, amount of work for the greatest amount of value uh, activities is writing cards to your priests. So it's already Donut Sunday. Everyone's already in there uh, having donuts. Grab some construction paper that's pretty cheap at the store. Your faith formation people probably already have markers and then have them all write a card to the priest and you collect them and send them all off at the same, on the same day. Um, spiritual bouquets are really awesome. Uh, you can gather what everyone is praying for their priest and then give it to them all at once and then it's promoting prayer. Um, and this is also, so you can do it on World Priest Day, you can do it on Priesthood Sunday. Um, Anytime the priest wants to preach about uh, his vocation story, no matter, no matter the day, is uh, good and very necessary. Um, and Father Richard is also available to come to parishes if he's asked far enough in advance to preach about vocations. Um, for National Vocations Awareness Week, it's the first full week in November. Uh, last year we did a social media campaign with the rosary, um, getting people to uh, pray pray rosary every single day for nine days. Um, I encourage you to tap into whatever our office is already doing. All of the graphics that we make, everything is available to you, uh, pretty much if you just ask. We're not trying to keep anything. Everything that's made is to be pushed out. Um, there's also events that go on during National Vocations Awareness Week, like adoration, typically um, at uh, the college campuses, so like at Rice, there was one at UST, there was an adoration for uh, an hour, um, and just lots of other things. So that's another thing, like if you uh, want to ask, if you have a school attached to your parish, that's a great way to ask them, hey, what are we going to do for uh, National Vocations Awareness Week? Uh, it's perfect for the youth to do something. We're in the beginning stages, uh, I think, of youth ministers planning for the year. So it's a great time to ask them, hey, what are we going to do in November? And if November's too soon, what are we going to do in April or May to promote vocations to make sure they're doing something? St. Martha's, Father Zach already left, but St. Martha's uh, last week did grill the priests. They had, um, they made cheese, uh, grilled cheese sandwiches for everyone, and they had all of the priests sitting at a table, and you could just ask them questions left and right. And so and that's a really good uh, thing to do. Uh, one of the hardest things, I think, to do is tell people no when people ask for seminarians or religious to come to their parish. And I 100% agree with you that if kids would be able to see seminarians and see religious more often, they would uh, maybe think about vocations more often. But the reality, it is really tough to get uh, religious and to get seminarians out of their normal routine uh, or when they're, the seminarians are supposed to be studying. Uh, so every once in a while you can see them at an event, but it's really tough to um, get them there. So I would encourage you to kind of find something, uh, a different streamline with the youth or a different way to promote vocations without seminarians actually um, being present because one day I really hope that every single parish can have a pastoral seminarian every single year. But we're not there yet. We'll get there soon. <laughs> um, the answer dinners, I think, is a good transition from a vocational events that the uh, vocations committee can put on versus what uh, our office puts on because it's kind of a middle ground uh, for both. So we have this general flyer that we make for every single, each parish will get their own with the date, the time, location, that can be printed and passed out. I think confirmation classes, all of them can have it. Each core member, uh, I think it's way more effective to ask the core member, will you please invite one person that you think might be called to the priesthood to the Andrew dinner on such and such a date? Um, because the personal invitation, in addition to also putting, I think they say in like the marketing world, if they see it like seven times, 
then they're going to come. Seven's a lot. But if you think about the flock note, the website, the social media, uh, a poster outside of the parish um, or outside of the church, we'll start hitting and racking it up. Uh, the answer dinner, just to talk a little bit about like the shared responsibility of the vocations office and um, the parish. So we asked the parish to provide the space um, the, uh, all the priests from that parish should go to it, and then the food. So if your vocations committee can't do, um, make all of the food, I strongly encourage you to ask the Knights of Columbus. They're great at cooking food, <laughs> and so they can help out. Um, we, our office does the registration. They sign the waivers through our website, and that's all a link just like provided for you. It's a general link that they all sign up for. Um, I have an Andrew Dinner how-to packet that you can even hand to your pastor if you want or get more copies. It's a good rundown of like optional games to play. Uh, what are the actual small group questions? We're just trying to make everything as easy as possible and uh, not as much commitment for the parish priest. Um, that way he'll be like, yes, let's have Andrew Dinner this day. I'll show up and you can assure him like, Pretty much all of the work's done for. Maybe you need to share your vocation story and facilitate a small group. But um, the marketing, the inviting people, uh, it's great when he also, the pastor also does all those things. Um, but you can assure him, like, we're trying to make it as little work as possible. Um, these are all of the entry dinners that we're having in the fall. Uh, this is the most we've had ever at once. So these are all for the fall. And... Uh, I had a go guy call me the other day and he said, well, why would we do an Andrew dinner when you already have so many? Uh, in the past, they used to do one big Andrew dinner at the seminary. I think that's kind of neat because you get to go be at the seminary in the same way you get to be at the rectory, like the home court advantage. Um, but people don't like to travel far. And I do think it's really hard for parents to bring their son especially if you live in the woodlands, 45 minutes to an hour downtown on a random Friday night or Saturday morning. Um, so although I would highly suggest uh, getting a seminary tour for your boys, if you could get the altar server group to all go down to the seminary uh, at one time, or if there's just a boys group, um, or if like they have to do it, men and women, just go down and visit. I do think that's a really great event that can easily be scheduled. Um, but the Andrew dinner, we're just having lots of them. Sometimes men from other parishes will go, but more likely if they don't have one at their parish, they're not going to go. So we're trying to get uh, as many Andrew dinners. So if your parish wants to have one in the spring uh, or you want to wait till next fall, um, we, can make, we can make it happen. We do make the goodie bags. So we typically, uh, last year we gave out to Save a Thousand Souls that was in the goodie bag. Um, this year, I think we're still going to give that out and have it there, like books there as an option. But in case they went to an Andrew dinner the year before, um, I think I want to give them pocket rosaries, like the really manly looking pocket rosaries or something. But that's still in the works. Um, so, yeah, we're starting strong in, I guess, uh, about a month. So that's exciting. Father Richard has not, cannot go to every single one. Um, and some are the same day, and so he's literally planning on going to one for an hour, driving and going to the next. Um, but if we fine-tune it enough, we can do it without Father Richard actually being there because we just need one priest to share his vocation story. We just need to, uh, I can, I'll provide the Liturgy of the Hours handouts for everyone, um, and then as long as we all go pray... It's really just a starting place for them to realize, oh, there's other people in my parish who are also thinking about the priesthood, and maybe they can become friends, or maybe they'll be like, oh, let's both go uh, to Mass at the seminary one day type of thing. Um, I think I talked about everything. Uh, oh, lastly, with the Andrew dinner, what we started uh, kind of last minute last year, um, at St. Vincent de Paul, they, well, their rectory set up really nice because they can have enough people inside and outside. And so the parents met outside on the deck um, because on the registration, we give them the option to come. And this really started because um, there's still sadly parents who uh, aren't excited about their sons becoming priests and it hinders them from actually accepting their invitation into seminary. 
Uh, so I've invited, uh, Anne has come to the Miriam dinner to talk to the parents and even the girls, uh, or I'll invite other seminarian parents to meet with the, the parents separately, just so they can start that conversation of what does discernment look like in the home? How can I uh, like guide my son as he explores this option? It's just not talked about enough, and so it's a place that we can do it easily. Um, a follow-up uh, to the Andrew dinner um, is a, a really good follow-up that can happen is Priesthood 101. I've, began, I've begun to ask pastor or parochial vicars if they will do this as a follow-up. Um, it's a newer thing. We adopted it from uh, Tulsa, I think diocese. I don't know if they're archdiocese. Um, and they've had really good success with it. And the reason being, it's very minimal work for the priest and leaders because each person has their own responsibility. One person is in charge of uh, opening up in prayer. One person is in charge of setting up the tech because they watch videos. But they're all pre-recorded videos, so, and our office provides all of the materials. And so we have the leader, uh, the leader packet, the... Uh, packets for each of the boys with their name on it and it's a six-week program and they meet once a week and so Father Richard has led these groups uh, a couple other priests have led these groups and they've seen great success for it, from it um, and so we're just going to hopefully get this as a follow-up a few of the Andrew dinners are a little bit too close to Christmas so I think follow up with all before um, but it could be maybe be a next semester thing. It could be right after the Andrew dinner while we got them engaged in talking because it's true if they go to an Andrew dinner and then no one talks to them for 10 months, they might be like, oh, that was a fling and I'm never talking about it again. <laughs> uh, so Priesthood 101. Um, to talk more about the Office of Vocations events, I really just wanted to run briefly through what we typically provide in a year, just so you're aware, so that if you ha have youth that are asking, or young adults, uh, I wanna, I'm interested, what should I do? You can say, oh, the Office of Vocations has silent retreats uh, very often that you should attend uh, or sign up for. So the silent retreat series that we have going on right now, uh, one is tomorrow and they're day retreats. So th this is all for young adults, ages 18 to 35 that are unmarried. It's for men and women and people who are dating. And we, I think we have to make that clear because um, it's an option for almost everyone. Um, yeah, so there's one tomorrow, there's one in November, and then there's one in February. So these are the day silent retreats. It's a silent retreat series. We also have Ignatian silent retreats that are five days long. They're typically at the end of December. And there's a, a one week for men at one place and then one week for women at another place. We've seen great success from these silent retreats. Uh, we've started tracking like, okay, if how many events do you go to and what's the correlation between those events and you entering seminary? And so it's, we start in high school, you go to an Andrew dinner and then you come to an explore retreat and then uh, you get older, you come to a silent retreat, you might go to men's discernment retreat and then they're in seminary. So that's kind of our goal and our uh, way to get people from the start from the parish and then into uh, applying for seminary. Um, verbum tuum is probably the most important and arguably best resource that we have. It gets the most of Father Richard and Joelma's time. Joelma's the associate director for vocations and they walk with the groups um, pretty much one-on-one -on -one, and you also get a spiritual director when you sign up for those four months. So it's two nights, uh, a day retreat and an overnight retreat. Um, that's what one of the flyers, the big posters and the small flyers, please take as many as you think your parish needs and if you know people personally, hand them out. It's starting earlier this year, we're trying, we made it four months instead of six because we thought, well, shorter commitment, maybe more people will sign up. But truly, um, People have gone there when they're dating and have decided, yes, this is my vocation. This is who I'm going to marry. And so we've had successful stories of uh, Catholic marriages coming out of Urban to them. We've had priests go, or uh, seminarians go through it. We've had people uh, discerning religious life. Uh, so that's, I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. And I did put the uh, graphic up there just so uh, we know what I'm talking about. 
That's, uh, besides those, MDR, men's discernment retreat is the other uh, young adults uh, only, I guess, event that we have. It's also in the summer and, well, maybe that's arguably the best <laughs> event we have because uh, a lot of those guys end up going uh, to seminary the next year and they walk with Father Richard, it's all at the seminary. Um, to talk more about our events for high schoolers that we have, we have Capture My Heart, which is for uh, high school girls. It's scheduled already for February 10th. Um, it's at a convent, and we're also hoping to have a Miriam dinner this semester. So we'll have one event in the fall, one event in the spring for high school girls. Um, we used to do Miriam dinners at parishes, so I may have even asked your parish before, can we schedule a Miriam dinner? Um, with the girls, they're willing to travel, um, and so, which is great. Uh, we had a Miriam dinner in, in uh, Katy, and people from Sugarland were trekking all the way uh, to go to a Miriam dinner. I think there's fewer resources, and so they're willing to go farther, and so we said, all right, well, if we're not gonna do them, uh, instead of doing them small at each parish, let's do a big, so at a convent, um, and so last, we had a lot of people at Capture My Heart. It was our first time doing it. And so we said, well, great response. We'll do it again, kind of thing. Um, other things that go on that might be good to just be aware of. We have Heart to Heart. It's Adoration the last Tuesday of the month at St. Joseph's. That goes on every single time. There's music during Adoration. Uh, the Jubilee celebration and priestly ordinations are also just great ways. If you want uh, to, if there's a way you can get all those Angie Dinner guys down to that ordination, I think that's really cool. Um, same thing with the priest versus seminary and basketball game. The Angie Dinner guys have discounted tickets and reserved seating, as long as you let me know. <laughs> um, and then our summer retreats, Explore, and Men's Discernment Retreat, Explore is for high schoolers. Um, and then there's two different options, one in June and one in July. And so I know these are already passed, but just so that uh, maybe whenever the posters come, or like the flyers come out uh, in the spring, you'll be like, oh yes, I know exactly what that is, and I'm gonna push it to these uh, groups um, that you know about your parish. Uh, no, but it's hopefully uh, first Friday after Easter in April. I don't know. Um, let's see what else I wanted to share with you. Yes. Yes. Oh, definitely, yes. Uh, I hope the goal is that with the email that goes out, uh, it can be a copy-paste to your bulletin. Um, every single parish, theoretically, knows about every single event because we have the Chancery Advisory that goes to each communications person and they can pull from uh, the email without us tell, asking them. But it's often that I have to email the communications person and through a direct email, then they say, oh yeah, I'll um, include it. And so if you also ask your communications person and I also email them, it's like one of those on the checklist of seven, like by the time they see it, then they'll uh, do it. <laughs> but yeah, good question. and. Um, I think I've only maybe sent out one or two massive um, vocations committee emails, but they're gonna start being more regular and uh, more often, just so that if you saw the first one and maybe you didn't get, have the time to send it over to the communications person, it, you'll, it'll be a good reminder. Oh, I didn't even, good thing I put this up here. I didn't even talk about Called by Name at all. Um, Called by Name is a Sarah uh, initiative um, they take names of um, names that are like thrown into a pot, basically of people who they think might be called to a vocation. And then with those names, we contact the pastor at their parish 
and say, hey, someone from your parish named Johnny is interested in the priesthood. If you know him or if you can look him up in the database and give him a call, uh, that might be very effective. Uh, we also, uh, th through the QR code, you can uh, fill, fill out the form. It used to be a uh, little sheet that was kept in the back of parishes, and then you had to fill out their information, and hopefully you had it all, or take it home and then fill it out and bring it back. And we were afraid we were losing people uh, from bringing it back. Uh, and so this way, it can be posted in the bulletin. Uh, you can do one Sunday or two Sundays to do like a big called by name push, uh, or maybe just every once in a while uh, people will see it. And uh, those, those names go directly to me, and we contact them, and based on their age, we'll invite them to men's discernment retreat, call, uh, explore a silent retreat that's coming up, um, that type of thing. Um, any questions about called by name? Oh, very nice, very nice. That's great. Um, any other questions? Thank you for your undivided attention. Truly, without y'all, there would just be this huge uh, lack of communication, lack of involvement from parishes, especially being such a big diocese. Um, I know Father Richard would love to come to every single parish and talk about vocations and go to every single faith formation night. Um, but until we get a second person as the vocations director, it's just not possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, very important. Uh, this past Sunday we had um, one of our parishioners, his name is Alex Burns, entered seminary and this is his first year. Uh, and so we did a blessing after ma or during Mass uh, so each person could just like witness uh, someone from in the pews with them, uh, entering seminary, taking the next uh, step. And so that was, that was really neat to see him uh, and be a, just a good witness to everything. So I know there was a lot of information and there's a lot to do and plan, um, but I definitely encourage you to reach out to our office um, if you need something, if you want one of the resources, and take as many of the flyers to your parish. We try and put them up and we try and get uh, priests to print them out and put them up, but uh, the more we keep pushing out and giving it to our friends, the better uh, our marketing strategies will be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the manila envelopes. And from now until about 2.30, if you need to leave, that's okay. But if you'd like to meet with uh, people from your parish that are here, I know we're kind of separated right now. Um, there's resources in there, like the Andrew Dinner How To, if you want to start uh, talking about who's doing what uh, to do that. Um, there's and then many other resources in there. Uh, I only printed one of each thing um, because I just wanted to save paper, but it can all be given to you electronically. I can definitely print more uh, in the coming days. But I'll go ahead and close us with the prayer at 2.25 um, in case no one's left yet, just to, like make sure everyone feels that they're free to go. <laughs> but thank you again. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and get the packages, maybe put one per table or I think there's about 17 different parishes represented here. Um, so there's 20 packages. But anyway, thank you for your time.